it's time politi uh, security, I beg your pardon, where despite fresh challenges, the desire of Governor of Borno State, Professor Babagana Zulum, uh, for resettlement of displaced persons to their ancestral homes remains unquenchable. So in furtherance of this, the Governor ordered nine armored personnel carriers for police operations in Malam Fatori in the border with Niger Republic, this towards restoring civil authority in the area. While inspecting the first batch of the armored carriers, the governor explained that they will enhance operations of the special uh, police unit in restoring civil authority in Malam Fatori, as well as complementing uh, military operations. Uh, well, Dr. Two, yes, the governor uh, is indeed desirous now to return in Malam Fatori and many other previously. Um, held areas now back from the clutches of uh, Boko Haram and of course you know for the people to rebuild for the cities to rebuild basically w what do you make of this move he has also set a date that later this month now uh, the residents who had left to Niger can now return to Malam Fatori uh, particularly well it's um, good news mm -hmm. because um, one thing that has been established clearly in this um, war in the northeast especially is the fact that the bulk of those fighting on the side of the terrorists are non-nigerians so what it means is it is this same route that these people come in from and through which they bring in their arms and ammunition that is why there is a lot of attention around the lake Chad basin region why we are cooperating with Niger Republic, Benin Republic, and Cameroon on the southern flank. Mm. So if we are going to get to where we should go, it means all of those towns around the border area must be properly secured and people returned to their homes. And how do you do it? Because in the past what has happened had simply been the soldiers who are heavily armed along both land and in the air. They take over a community. They take over a village. And then they hand it over to the police, civil defense, the civilian joint tax force, who are less empowered in terms of arms and ammunition. And then the insurgents return and reclaim. So, civil authority there is broken again. The implication of this is that we need to do a lot more spending on fortifying those villages in terms of more armed men and equipment. And that's, what simply, what, that's simply what the governor has done. He has done very well. But more will need to be done. Because from what we have seen, what we have had, these people we are doing battle against, they are very armed. And as soon as you overcome one level of their um, competence in terms of armory, in terms of men mm. in the field, they build it up and they return. We've heard of cases where they have tried to attack a military base, they've been defeated, they go back, they rearm, and they come back. Mm. Meaning that we are set for this war. Mm. With nine armored personnel carrier, we definitely know this is not enough. But it's a big, huge, huge, huge step. Because for a governor who is trying to resettle his people, not only rebuild their communities, but also empowering them He's gone to so many villages where he has given cash. He has given food stuff for them to be able to stay after terrorists drove them out. It's a huge step because these things don't come cheap. They don't. And that is the reason why also we've conversed so many times on this program. We need to start manufacturing these things right here in this country. Because that way it's cheaper and it's easier to assess. 
in terms of availability. Instead of us waiting, waiting, waiting for it to be shipped in, for us to couple it, for us to adapt it to our own situation. We need more of this. Absolutely, because I, the governor, I, I even have picked him, um, you know, as we much. More uh, absolutely. In the governor's uh, latest visit uh, to, to Malam Faturi, uh, reports have it that uh, the soldiers on ground actually told him their needs that uh, they are far from being met and he you know made assurances gave assurances that he would supply uh, he would he would do his bit now in meeting this uh, equipment deficit yes, equipment uh, as have been it established but um, you know what are your thoughts in this uh, in, the, in in governor babazulum's uh, mission i think uh, even when you look at it from day one when he became governor you know, he has seen the strategy that the only thing that can save us is to reset to, you know, people who are displaced. And you have m millions of people in the IDP camps. Sustaining them in the IDP camp is not something that we can afford. For a short time, yes, but over time, you see what has been happening. So the best strategy is when you win, when you reclaim a community, rebuild it, provide security, and people will say reason to come back. So resettlement strategy, I think he's been doing that. But the more he's tried, you realize that it will, it will not work. Why? He has explained part of it. Because those bad boys will still come back. So we've overburdened the military. There are other security agencies that we can empower. And the job, you know, after the, the, the military came, you know, reclaim a place, the moving up every other thing can be done by other security agents. That we have not been doing. And this one that is doing now, you know that um, the involvement of the military, I mean, security, at the highest level is also you know commendable here because those tanks they will still have to be fixed with a lot of things which the state no state governor has power to do in nigeria so you need the cooperation of the federal authorities and when there is this kind of synergy i want him to even do more if trying a few communities with this and they realize that this is good then even if it's the there's need for the federal government you know, to adopt that strategy. We need to reclaim. If you have been to the Northeast, you won't believe what you will see. Many of those places, you know, are still there. The people, people no longer live there. They, so you, you can rebuild those places, get people to come back. You can't force people anyway, mm -hmm. because some people, there is no amount of, you know, rebuilding that you do. Mm -hmm. Some people will never want to go back. But there will be people who will want to come, because some people, Without farming, there is no life. So they can only get, you know, enough parts of land to farm in such places. So I want the government to, you know, do, you know, double its energy, its you know, its commitment towards resettling, you know, resettlement in those communities. I know it's been rebuilding them, mm. but when you rebuild and those boys came back again, it means wasted, you know, efforts. But when you rebuild and you police after, you know, rebuild, I'm um, rebuilding, people will see reason to go back. When I know that my people are back and no harm has befallen them, I may have the confidence to also do the same thing. You get my point? That's and uh, understandably, uh, well, BKO, I'll uh, come to you now. Understandably, uh, there are um, residents on, on record who say that they would rather remain in, in Niger Republic where they have, you know, you know, taken refuge to rather than uh, return home. Uh, current realities on record also say that these areas, Malam Fatori, are still uh, very much unsafe. Uh, that some um, residents would rather travel into these areas through Yobe State rather than take the is it eight hour drive now to, uh, to this area. So, you know, these are um, realities. But then you are in the Northeast. What sentiments, you know, are you getting as to is Borono, is Malam Fatori, the, the capital now of, of the, the local government, is Malam Fatori indeed safe? And November 27 is just days away.
factory is the um, headquarters of Abadam local government. And um, for some of us, whenever we remember that name, it sends cold shivers down our spines. It was in Malam factory that the great tank, uh, tank uh, commander, Abu Ali, yeah. Colonel Abu Ali, was killed in a night attack by Boko Haram. It was in this same Abadam local government that Boko Haram killed dozens of Nigerian soldiers, including their commander, an army colonel from Kebi State, a few years back. Now, since 2014, nobody except soldiers have lived in Malamfatori, whereas it was a big center of commerce. With so many of the residents are Hausa traders. The governor is determined to reset two people over there. He's been rebuilding some communities, notably Ajigi. Ajigi community rebuilt and reset two people. But Boko Haram went back there and killed some of the residents. We, there have been cases like that. Guzamala local government was rebuilt and Boko Haram came and killed more than 100 soldiers in one day. Since that day, since that day till today, no soldier has been posted to Guzamala local government. As we speak, no civilian, no soldier, it's just Boko Haram that is doing what they like in that area. I appreciate the passion of the governor. I appreciate his determination. Keeping people in IDP camp since 2014 is not easy. Thanks to the administration, they give them food. Uh, NEMA comes, they give them food. NGOs come, they give them food. Some of these people do not want to even uh, go back home anymore. And the governor is saying, look, let us make our efforts, keep these places safe so that our people can be relocated. And he doesn't think that we should keep soldiers alone in one place for more than eight years. Mm. He's not convinced that that is right. You know, for soldiers alone to just be policing a community, he thinks that it makes sense to bring people to those communities. But even the roads leading to those communities are not safe. Just uh, yesterday, mm. Because people do not want to travel along the Dambua Maiduguri Highway. Only somebody who does not value his life will want to travel along mm -hmm. that road. So they go through your base state. But we've seen these people, these terrorists, now go to the road around Buneyadi, Bunengeri, to begin to pick people. They picked 18 passengers yesterday. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be beheaded. Some of them, uh, they will take ransom and let them go. Anyone who is an NGO worker, or even a government worker, or a soldier, or a civilian native among those people will most likely be killed. The governor went to the Bakasia DP camp and shared more than 500 million within a period of seven hours. He's giving them money. He wants them to return home because he's determined to close that IDP camp by December 3rd, he wants people to return home and not be reliant on government for handouts. So if, if the, the government, government has tried its best over the years to keep, uh, I mean, to uh, uh, take care of these IDPs. But at some point, we must keep those communities safe so that people can return to those communities, they can return to their normal lives of farming, you can imagine our people, more than 132 communities in Abadam local government, not one of them do we have human beings living in them, except my laboratory where we have soldiers, just soldiers alone. Our people are refugees in the Nigeria Republic. The day the governor went there, 
there was a stampede because he distributed money and clothes. There was a stampede that about four people died. So he thinks that it makes sense to bring them back home. Those of them who are ready to come home, the governor would uh, be happy to have them come home. Each of those APCs, each of those APCs cost 170 million naira. That's to tell you the extent to which Governor Zulum is going, how much he's spending to secure the state, how much he's spending to rebuild and make communities safe so that people can come and live in them. I really um, appreciate his efforts and I have so much pity for the governor. And I just hope that a time will come when we will have peace in that area. But if you ask me, Many people will say, look, no matter all the, all the money in the world that you offer them, mm. they will not go to some of those communities. We have senators. The other day I was discussing with Senator Kiari. I said, you've not been to your hometown since 2016. He said, no, Jide, I've not been there since 2014, not 2016. He is from Gashigar in Bono North. An overwhelming um, um, portion of Bono North is not safe. The boys are roaming free in those areas. So people don't want to live in those communities. Kareto, all of those communities, they are areas where Boko Haram are simply moving around. Anyone who is unlucky will get killed. But they have met in the governor of Bono State, a very determined fellow who is desperate to return normalcy to those communities and get the people to come back home. Well, uh, doctor, what do you, how how do you, you know, see the way things are going now? Uh, you know, what do you see on ground to even match the government's desire, optimism, and efforts? You know, in rebuilding uh, Borono, you know, especially if you look at the support he's getting from residents. Well, the like Jide said, he, the governor has um, put himself in the position where it's winning the confidence of the people. Because what he simply does when he goes out is to back his words with action. He comes to this community and says, see, I know you shouldn't be here in the headquarters of this local government. You all have your villages all around. He goes into those villages, he builds houses there, then he comes back, he empowers the people, give, he will give them seedlings where they are farmers. So return to the farm and let us see what happens. But like we, I, I said earlier, the only challenge has been see the number of security operatives that we have. We have spread them across the country far too thin than to be able to confront what is happening. This is an unconventional war. If it was a conventional war, it's easier to fight. But these are guys who fight in unconventional means. They just come in, swooping on a particular place, 60 vehicles with two, 300 um, men, and they are confronting maybe about 20 soldiers. It's a bit difficult. That's why I keep giving it to those guys. Because for them to be able to confront two, 300 people, they've done well. How many rounds of bullets do you think would have been released to them? Those tanks that they have, how much of ammunition do you have on them? So it means it takes a tactical edge to be able to confront these guys. And that's why when we lose some of these guys, these guys like uh, the late Colonel Abu, it becomes very painful. All right, uh, let me interrupt you. We have a call, um, a very mm -hmm. first caller, Ololade from Milori. Welcome. Please carry on. Oh, yeah, hello, lady. Good afternoon. Welcome. I, I want to appeal to the government and the security, our security operatives, to see that they do everything possible that you can help the security challenges by this December. Because they have lost a lot out of these security challenges. I know they are doing everything possible to see that they put it to an end. It is my prayer that God and the Indian masses will see them through so that the country will be free from these uh, security challenges. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your last thoughts, Adekunle. Your last words on this. The governor needs to be encouraged to do more, and uh, I'm with him in spirit. What he's doing, he needs to do more. I know there are discouragements here and there. He shouldn't feel discouraged. He should do more because keeping people in IDP is not the best solution. Resettling people, that's when we begin to see success. That at, at the end of the day, we are making progress. Yes. Without that, <laughs> we will just be wasting Especially resources. When you realize and I that feel sad for him no? that uh, uh, his energy, the, the governance is really tough in that part of the country. And uh, I think he, he's, he's living up to expectations. All right. Uh, well, okay. So, so much has been said. Uh, and like you've said, uh, you've all said uh, the governor really needs uh, to be encouraged, doing a laud laudable job there. Uh, we just hope that um, all these efforts will pay off in the end uh, for a truly safe Borono, uh, for the sake of the residents and, you know, so many other factors. Uh, well, it's time to talk.